So in this next Photoshop tutorial, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how we can create simple shapes in Photoshop. So just before we begin, do remember to subscribe and do check out the playlist for beginner Photoshop tutorials if you're interested in learning more features on Photoshop. So like everything in Photoshop, there's a whole variety of different ways you can create simple shapes. But what I'm going to be showing you today is using the shape tool itself. So to find the shape tool, what we have to do is go to the left hand toolbar and you'll find the shape tool about halfway through your screen. But just hold your left mouse key and as you can see, the shortcut on the right hand side is U. So if you press U at any time, it will always take you to this tool directly. So as you can see, we have a whole range of different options for when we create our shapes. I'm going to start off with the rectangle tool, which is yours is probably already set to. But all I have to do is release on top of the rectangle tool and it takes me to the tool. Now, as you can see, the top bar on my screen has now changed according to the tool we've just activated. So you can see that we've selected a rectangle tool. Now, these two parameters are very important. The fill is basically the color of the square on the inside. And then the stroke is the outline or the border, as it were, of the square and what color we're going to apply to that. So as you can see, at the moment, the stroke is set to no stroke because there's a red dash going through and the fill is set to black. So if I wanted to change the color, all I'd have to do is press on the black and it gives me these options, including some colors I've already used before. Or I can use the top to select no fill, my swatches, which is these options here. Or I can choose a gradient or I can use a pattern. I can also go to the right hand side here and select the color wheel. And it will come up with a color picker where I can choose a color directly. So I'll just quickly select a color. Let's go for green and press OK. And as you can see, it's updated in my fill. All I have to do is press off here to make sure this box disappear. Now, if I also wanted to add a stroke to my rectangle, all I'd have to do is press on the stroke option here. And as you can see, it's currently set to no stroke, in which case no stroke would appear on the edges of my box. What I'm going to be doing is selecting one of the colors I've already recently used. I'm going to be using this black color here and just pressing off that too. The next option we have is determining how thick we want this stroke to be. So as you can see, it's currently set to two pixels. You can press on the down button here and you get a slider where you can adjust the width of your stroke, or you can just select the text itself and input your own number. I'm going to be setting it to four pixels. So four, press enter and it's changed it to four. The next option allows us to adjust whether we want the stroke to be a continuous line or dashed or dotted. It also has some further options, including a line and caps. Caps essentially means that if your rectangle is not connected on all the corners, what it would look like at the edge of one of your paths. And the corners obviously affects the corners itself. When do you want it rounded or cut off? So I'm just going to leave these options because I'm happy with that. So I can now press off this and just draw my rectangle by holding my left mouse key and dragging across the screen. And if I continue holding it in, as you can see, it, I can adjust the size of my rectangle. If I hold shift, it will stay to a square form. So it will keep it nice and aligned on all sides. I'm going to be creating a rectangle, so I'm going to let go of shift. And all I have to do once I'm happy with the size is let go. As you can see, just above and to the right of my cursor, there's also some information on the width and the height of the current box that I have drawn, if you want to be more precise with dimensions. So I'm going to let go. And as you can see, I have now drawn my rectangle. So this rectangle, if I go back to the move tool, which is top left hand corner here, the first option, then I can now drag and move my rectangle and use it in my designs wherever I need it. Now, obviously, there are more options to creating shapes, so I'd highly encourage you to experiment and try different things out. I'll quickly show you some other options for creating shapes. So if I go back to the shape tool and choose the ellipse tool, this basically allows me to draw circles so I can hold and drag. As you can see, all of the colors and options that we've adjusted before have been remembered and automatically get applied to this new shape. But if you want to change them, you can go back and change them here. Or if you can't find this, you can always go to the appearance panel here in properties, where you can always adjust these properties again. Now, if we quickly go back to the shape tool, we can also create triangles. And as you can see, if I hold shift, I can create a triangle that is aligned on all sides. We can then rotate this triangle by dragging and moving it or scale this triangle by using these little white squares on all of the corners of our triangle. I can then also use a polygon tool, which allows us to create polygons. So if I just drag that out for now and hold shift, as you can see, it's created a polygon. 
But if I wanted to create a shape with more sides, all I'd have to do is go to the top here and adjust this number here. So as you can see, it's currently set to five sides. If I change that to nine and press off and now drag and draw, it will create a nine sided shape. Then lastly, we've also got the line tool. Now like the polygon tool, we can also adjust the weight of our line. So it's currently set to two pixels. So if I drag, you can see it's a two pixel line. But if I wanted to change that to, let's say 10, as you can see, the line becomes much, much wider. And it still has the interior just like the rectangle too. And finally, if we go back to the shape tool, we can also create a custom shape tool. So this allows us to use a shape that we've already imported into our projects. So for example, it's currently set to a tree. Photoshop has some default options, which you can select from. Say I wanted a boat in my project, I could press on the boat and just drag and draw this out. And as you can see, it will create a path with the boat itself. We will be going into more depth in another video on how to use the path tool and create your own custom shapes. But just for now, these are some options if you want to use them. So this was a very quick and very, very basic way of just creating some quick shapes. In the future, we'll be taking a look at how we can actually create our own custom shapes and how we can transform these shapes into more interesting compositions. If you want to know how you can actually arrange your shapes on the image with the layers, then do check out the video I made on that last time. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And make sure you stay tuned to this channel if you're interested in learning more about Photoshop.